Hello, welcome to HackMyControlSystem.com. My name is Nate, and in this episode, we'll demonstrate how to fuzz the Modbus protocol and induce crashes. So out of convenience, I have the victim uh, VM SSH'd into our physical Raspberry Pi running ConPot. We see everything is moving along nicely. We'll then go to our attacker VM, and then we're going to do something very simple. We're actually going to pull random data from the operating system and then pipe it over netcat to conpot over port 502 so we can actually gain access to this type of random bits and data and all this other junk by concatenating uh the dev you random file take a look at this real quick hit the output this is what we'll be sending um to conpot obviously unstructured unexpected etc so we can go ahead and cat that and let's send it over to netcat to COMPOT over port 502. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and then bring over our VM and we instantly see that we have a crash. So this is a very quick easy way to induce errors. It also works on hardware. Um, I've heard that this can crash a Micrologix uh, 1100. You just need to essentially uh, you know, time how long it's going to run. Now back to our victim VM. We can re-enable our slave, start all of our automation, verify that we have random data. This is running as sudo. So we should be seeing Port 502 listening, excellent, great. We have established connection. Now we'll go ahead into our offense directory, smod, and we'll start smod real quick. And we're looking at modbus function fuzzing. So use Modbus function, let's bring this up a little bit for you. Function, fuzzing, show our options, set our R hosts to our Modbus pal, set our UID to zero because we know it will throw a fit. Go ahead and start. And now we're fuzzing the recoils on Modbus Pal. And if we start a TCP dump capture on our bridged interface. No DNS name resolution, verbose. Also show me the hex. We can essentially monitor our output as it scans. We'll go ahead and let that run. The next thing I wanted to show you is if you recall, we had our pen test PCAP. I'd like to show you how to actually um, set up uh, a, uh, a protocol fuzzing format uh, and then use Autodaf to launch that output. Uh, the, really, it's um, it's very simple. It's just a bunch a bunch of different steps. Uh, the first thing you want to do is actually identify you know what packet structure uh, you want to start fuzzing, and we can use Wireshark. We're just reading Wireshark, and we'll go ahead and open our PCAP file. We can then obviously sort by Modbus TCP. 
get an idea of what type of commands or function codes, I should say, we want to send. This looks like a good one. There's a lot of different fields here. We see uh, function code 43, request some basic device information, fantastic. So now we'll go to File, Export Packet to Sections, and then we want to save this, uh, save this as a PDML XML file. And I will just give it a name. I think it was 43. Apologize if I'm wrong. Um, one thing it doesn't do is add the extension by default, so it may be um, a value if you just go ahead and type in PDML after it. Uh, additionally, we want to ensure that we're not uh, getting all displayed packets, whether just the one that we want. Go ahead and save that. After we're done here, we can go ahead and close Wireshark. And if we look in our directory, we have function 43 set up for us. The next command we'll use is a PDML to AD. And all we're doing is changing the function 43 PDML format to AD. and then do some compiling with it. Oops. There we go. At which point in time, we can go ahead and run autodef. Pseudo privileges. I'm actually, instead of using verbose, I'm gonna use a debugging format. I'm gonna invert the fields as well. Specify port 502, we'll use our web switch, and then we'll give it our compiled. And we'll go ahead and run that. Oop, forgot a flag, which is good. You get to see the, see what that error looks like. We need to specify a remote host. We can do that with attack R. And we see it's kind of doing its thing until it uh, go ahead and says, hey, uh, I'm done fuzzing. Uh, this is a tool that you could start messing around with. Um, definitely worth the time. Here we're leveraging the script modfuzzer. Very simple uh, usage syntax, python modfuzzer.py, followed by the uh, command parameter hyphen capital D and the IP. And then we go ahead and uh, let it do its thing against the uh, web switch hardware. I went ahead and uh, kind of edited this. Uh, it went for about 30 minutes until you saw one of the outlets actually um, turn off uh, based upon the uh, randomized input that it received. Uh, fantastic script. Um, it's uh, syntax as well as where to uh, pull this down. Um, you can find that information in the show notes as well as in the website. So what did we learn? Well, restrict Modbus communications to the client and servers. Use intrusion detection to alert or prevention devices such as a firewall to block this traffic. As discussed in an earlier episode, Snort's preprocessors can detect an alert on protocol anomalies. This may be beneficial to the OT staff as they may want to know when a device has issues with communication, maybe a NIC or other hardware failure. Compare traffic to a baseline and alert on any deviances from normal behavior. In an upcoming video series, we'll discuss IP, fi IP fix and NetFlow and how it can be used to establish a baseline in network traffic. Also, identify your weaknesses before the attackers do. Performing tests such as these in a lab will help you in OT identify an alert on symptoms of device failure. That concludes this quick episode. We fuzzed Modbutch traffic, function codes, and crashed some devices. In the next episode, we'll show you how to manipulate legitimate traffic from a Modbus server to a client. We thank you for viewing and ask that you subscribe by pressing the subscribe link below. Lastly, please note that we listed our references below in the show notes. Thank you much.